This program is made possible by the partners and friends of Bob Yandian Ministries. Coming up on this episode of Student of the Word. You can't, with all the money in the world, cheat death. It's still going to come. So you realize something. I'm here for an allotted time. I'm here for a time period. I'm going to do the most I can to help produce money for my family, but also for the kingdom of God. For more than 40 years, Bob Yandian has been an expositor of the Bible, making seemingly complicated doctrine easy to understand. Grab your Bible and something to take notes with and study the Word of God with Pastor Bob Yandian. Hello and welcome again to Student of the Word. Glad to have you with us today. And if you're joining us for the first time, really we welcome you today and thank you for visiting with us. And uh, especially those I want to talk to that have been visiting here for a long time. I mean, you came and you visited and you really enjoyed what you're uh, hearing and seeing. So again, I want to thank all of you. So if you're new or if you've been around for a while, thank you for tuning in. And uh, just want to thank you for becoming a part of this. You know, but just by listening to it, the Word of God's going to affect you. And uh, this will become your channel for the next half hour for God to speak to you through me. There's other broadcasters on here that God speaks through them too. And so just be open. But I plan on sharing something you probably don't hear a whole lot about. And that's been going on for the past three days. I'm teaching on the subject of God and the businessman and the person of Jesus Christ working through us to help us in business. Because again, God has a special plan for business. I've got two books that I'm dealing with. The first one, the small one over here on the side is called Unlimited Partnership, God and the Businessman, and tells you basically what the Word of God has to teach throughout it toward business. The fact that God established business has set it up. We've covered this before in the past three days, but God gave Adam a job before he gave him a wife and children. Yet the first commandment was be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. The first commandment had to have a wife to, fu to fulfill it. But even before that was fulfilled, he gave him a job. And so in essence, what he was doing was preparing for a wife he didn't have, preparing for a life that was yet to come. And so forward preparation in business is so important and so important in life. So many people plan one day at a time, but God intended that you also look down the road. And uh, that's what business is for, to help now, but also build it up for the future that after you're gone, it'll provide for those that survive, but also into the next generation, your children can take over because God gives durable riches, the Bible says. The world doesn't give durable riches, but God does and promises that those riches can be transferred to your children and your children's children. So again, we don't see too many of them today, but a lot of times we saw business where it you know, talked about uh, so-and-so and son. And uh, that was because children learned from their parents what they were doing and planned on taking over the family business after the father was gone. And uh, we see that so much because this is such a scriptural thing. But again, God established business. Business was given to Adam and his was to take care of until the ground. And this next book I have on the book of James, there's a section of a chapter, chapter three and chapter four, that deal with the business impact. And that's what we're going to de be dealing with today, business and the church. Because God has called business people in the church to help raise funds for the kingdom of God. That a Christian businessman realizes, I'm not just here to have a business. I'm not just here for a car. I'm not just here for my name. I'm not here to have a, a you know, a Fortune 500 company. If that happens, fine. I am here to help push and to further the kingdom of God. And business has been used for that. And so God had Adam till the ground, preparing for a wife that was to come and children that were to come. And in essence, he taught us something. All business comes from the ground. We're still tilling the ground today. And because the curse entered into the dust of the ground, it affected business because business comes from the ground. So the resistance that hit in nature and the curse that hit Adam himself and Eve herself really affected the earth. And so business has some opposition against it, of which God said to Adam, you can still eat the fruit of the ground, but now you have to do it with the sweat of your brow. It's going to take more effort because the ground's going to resist you in many cases. And just as business has so much opposition today through taxes and through uh, through laws and, and through all the different things and the, and the principles that, that government even puts against it and, the, and, the, and the, uh, all the circumstances that deal around business and heavy competition, all those things you can still, with God on your side, have a business that prospers. And we've covered that for the for the past three days, dealing with those business principles. So again, thank you. And for those of you who are giving out of your own personal income into my ministry and those giving out of a business income into my ministry, thank you so much. I personally believe in tithing out of your own income and your business income 
because God promised prosperity for it. And that way you can make sure you're giving into the kingdom of God on a consistent and steady basis, then extra offerings beyond that. So I'm not asking for your tithes. I'm just asking you have an extra offering you can give each month out of your business or out of yourself, just out of your own personal income that would bless and benefit the kingdom of God. My ministry is to help raise up a new generation of ministers. And I want you to stand with me in helping me do that so that after I'm gone, those ministers will still keep prospering and moving in the things of God. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 11 today. And we'll start with verse four. Then we're going to take this again back into the principles of prosperity, the principles of business. And that is Proverbs 11, four, riches profit in the day of wrath, riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness or integrity delivers from death. And so integrity is moral uprightness, a principled life living on honesty and principles in line with the word of God. Integrity is a witness to others and a guide to your own life. So when God guides you through integrity, remember again, the Holy Spirit guides us, the word of God guides us, but here's something else. He's told us in the book of Proverbs that integrity can be a guide. What would integrity do? Not just a wristband that says, what would Jesus do? What would integrity do? And integrity would go this way way, that's simply God saying, you don't need to pray about this. You don't even need to go find a scripture. What would integrity do? And when you do that, not only does it become a a boom to your own life, and not only does it make principles to guide your own life, but it also shows others what you really stand for and becomes a witness to others of the unwavering word of God, the unwavering new birth inside of you, the unwavering partnership we have, you have with God, and you're a disciple of his too. Deuteronomy chapter eight tells us, Uh, That is, uh, keep your focus and you can keep your wealth. You keep your focus on God and and setting first the kingdom of God. He said, if you'll seek first the kingdom of God as righteousness, he'll see to it all these things are added to you and the things are the things of life. But when you get your eyes off of the Lord and you get your eyes off of the kingdom of God and you no longer are seeking it first and you start to seek these other things, then the word of God simply says, this is one of the lusts of life. You know, the word of God comes complete as it says in Proverbs with two hands. It's like a beautiful woman. In the right hand is length of days. In the left hand is riches and honor. But the whole essence is keep seeking after the woman. Keep seeking after the word and the two hands will come with it. Don't get caught up by looking at the two hands and go for the long life and trying your best to change all your health habits and all that. Try to keep yourself here longer. Even if you could keep yourself here for 10 more years, what does that mean in the light of eternity? Nor go to the left hand, which has riches and honor in it, and seek after the riches because honestly, rich people don't live any longer on this earth than poor people. And so again, we often think, you know, well, all this money, I can buy some way to keep myself here longer. No, you can't. You can't with all the money in the world, cheat death. It's still going to come. So you realize something. I'm here for an allotted time. I'm here for a time period. I'm going to do the most I can to help produce money for my family, but also for the kingdom of God. So that when I'm gone, the kingdom of God will keep on going. What I've done for God's kingdom on this earth, I'll be rewarded for in heaven. It says in Revelation 14, 13, that our works do follow us when we die and go to be with the Lord. Deuteronomy 8 says in verses 17 through 20, don't say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand has brought me this wealth but you shall remember the Lord your God. It is he that gives you power to get wealth. The word power, there's actually the word for finances or for money. And it simply says, it's the Lord that gives you, uh, gives you wealth to get wealth or money to get money. In essence, he gives you the money to start with. It always takes money to make money. And the Lord even will start you up with the, with the seed to begin with. He gives seed to sowers and seed is finances here. So he's saying again that he gives you money to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto your fathers as it is this day. The purpose of finances is to help you spread the covenant of Jesus Christ and the wealth of the gospel above the wealth of anything. Because if you gave a person $1,000, might, they might be shouting and rejoicing, but you can give them something worth a whole lot more, and that's eternal life. And eternal life starts the moment they accept Jesus. It goes right on into eternity. And so it goes on in verse 19, and it shall be that if you do all, and that if you do at all forget the Lord your God and walk after other gods, that would be money, that would be anything else, and serve them and worship them, I testify against you this day, you will surely perish. As the nations which the Lord destroys before your face, so shall you perish because you would not be obedient to the voice 
of the Lord your God. How do you forget the Lord your God? In this verse it says, don't forget the Lord your God and start to walk after other things. You begin to look at yourself. You begin to think of your own wisdom. You begin to think of your own expertise and power and you think, man, I was smarter than I thought I was. No, you're dumber than you think you are. No, it's simply saying here, God gave you everything. I mean, in every, people often go to work and say, well, I did this. No, God gave you the talent. God gave you the strength. God gave you the breath. He gave you everything and the money to even start with. Everything comes from God. Every good gift and perfect gift comes from above. Don't forget the Lord your God. What happened to Israel when they came into Canaan? They forgot the Lord their God. And they begin to say, all this stuff is mine. And no, God actually brought them into a land where he said, you won't have to have manna fall every day. It's going to grow right out of the ground. Nothing grew in the wilderness. God provided supernaturally for them, but he's told them about business. You'll dig gold and copper and brass and silver out of the hills. You'll have so many goats, so many uh, cows. You'll have so much uh, uh, other things, you know, livestock that he said it'll be innumerable. And we see that happening when Abraham went there. He had so much that he ended up giving part of it to Lot, his nephew. And so the other thing is, is how do you serve other gods? It's you take the God off the throne of your life life and your personal business. And instead of the gospel, you make money your top priority. And all of a sudden you no longer seek first the kingdom of God. You're seeking money. You're chasing after money. And that was never the purpose for getting in business. Getting in business was to fulfill a personal dream you had that you seem to have inside. You think, man, I've got an idea for a business. Next of all, the next thing is I'm going to give it to God. And I'm going to give so much out of my income to God. And through the years, I'm going to keep increasing how much I give to God because the greatest thing I can hear is not how much somebody enjoyed my product. It's the person accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior through my giving into the gospel. So you begin to look to money as to what you can buy. That is your God. And the Bible talks about what God hates is those who are lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. That is a verse directed to Christians, not to the world. Though it's, the world can't love possessions more than God. It's a Christian that suddenly switches his love for God and turns possessions into number one. So let's take a look at Timothy. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, I want to take a look beginning in verse uh, 9 through 11. We're going to start taking some admonition to businessmen in the congregation. And here in Timothy, Timothy has many uh, business people in the congregation. And listen, don't ever look at people with money as somehow they are evil. They are a great blessing to the kingdom of God. In fact, many of them could walk in that office of a giver found over in Romans chapter 12. Don't ever look down on people in the congregation with money because they're the ones that fulfill that call on their life to be a giver. There's an office of a giver found in Romans chapter 12. And so Timothy's going to address the members of his congregation beginning in verse 9 through verse 11 of 1 Timothy chapter 6. I think we'll just wait till we get back from the break to get into that one because it's such a great part. I don't want to break it into two. So when we come back from the break, we'll take up from there. And then we'll also go to the book of James. So you can already find James chapter 4. We'll be going into that part and direct it into that part and let you see it so that you'll know which part we're going into. And once we get in there, we'll start addressing this to businessmen today because these verses have never changed in their impact, never changed in what God has to say to them and what Timothy had to say to his congregation in Ephesus and what James had to say to his congregation in Jerusalem still applies to us in the Word of God today. So we will see you immediately after the break. Bob Yandian Ministries is training up a new generation in the Word of God. You will never know until you get to heaven how many people received Jesus, were filled with the Holy Spirit, healed, or found God's will for their life through your support and prayers. If you would like to become a partner with Bob Yandian, visit our website at bobyandian.com and click on Partnership or call us at 918-250-2207. Would you like a business partner who never fails, one who labors tirelessly, never sleeps, and is even more interested in your success than you are? One who sees the future and always knows how and when to expand and invest. This business partner is God Himself. Many allow Him into their lives and marriages, but don't know that He also wants to be involved in their business and finances. God made covenants with Abraham, Jacob, Moses, and David, and led each to great success. Now he wants to do the same for you. But this unlimited partnership can only occur when you take your limited resources and wisdom and combine them with God's infinite power. Whether you're already successful or still looking for your big break, this can be the turning point in your business and financial life. To order God and the Businessman, go to bobyandian.com, 
or call 918-250-2207. Welcome back. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. And of these verses that we find in Timothy, he addresses deacons and elders and all the different things, the, the people that work in the church. But it really comes down to what's so important in the church is businessmen. And, you know, probably a lot of these businessmen were people that Timothy prayed with. And, and when they first started wanting to go in their business, they probably said to Timothy and said to him, man, I just love Jesus. I love this church. And I just wish I had more to give. I see how we're expanding from the church at Ephesus. Six other churches began. The seven churches in Asia found in the first three chapters of Revelation are all came out of that church in Ephesus. And so I'm sure they saw the expansion, more and more people getting saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, signs, wonders, and miracles. They just had a desire in them to open up a business and through their business help to fund the gospel of Jesus Christ. They probably went to Timothy as their pastor. He prayed with them and saw them start with such an honest heart. We begin to see after a while that oftentimes in business, we get so wrapped up in business, we don't study like we used to, don't pray like we used to, don't listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And after a while, it's no longer the Word of God that becomes our standard. It's now the Wall Street Journal. And it's now watching some business channel on television. We begin to think all these people can help me make the proper decision. But we'll see here what he has to say. First Timothy chapter six, look with me at verse nine through 11. It says, be sure that they seek, uh, that they seek to be rich. Those who seek to be rich fall into temptations and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. I want you to notice it doesn't say money is the root of all evil because that's often how the world quotes it. No, it's not money that's the root of all evil. God gave money. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil. And it's simply saying here, don't let your love for God be switched over to now money because God will not compete with money. It becomes now you have two masters as described in the book of Matthew. So he says, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after have erred from the faith, pierced themselves through with many arrows. But you, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. He's simply bringing back these businessmen to the roots of how they began their business. And they started off with integrity. They started off with meekness. They started off with godliness. They started off with patience. And they listened to the voice of the Holy Spirit, the Word of God in coming to church. I've seen people get into business and they were so excited and they came in for weeks. They would tell me how great it was as the business began to prosper. They quit attending church so much. They bought themselves a nice boat, so they were gone on Sunday out on the lake, and all types of things happened, and I would see them every once in a while, and they talked less about Jesus and talked more about their business and talked about how they're going to expand their business to go here and here and open up a second location, and they think I should be happy for them. I am happy for them, but man, I'm so despondent because I know what this verse says right here. They've erred from the faith. They've erred from the truth of the things of God. They give Jesus lip service where it used to be Jesus was number one, and they gave their business lip service. Now the whole thing is turned around and it's now the love of money. They're always looking. And whenever their money comes along, instead of giving the first fruits or the tithe to the Lord, the first thing they tell me is when, when I, I mention the fact, can you give toward this project? No, it's not liquid. It was when you got it. You had to turn around and put it into something that made it not liquid at the moment. But when it first came in, that's why it's called the first fruits. When you first got that, it was a check. When you first got that, it was a money transfer into your bank. And so it was liquid for a moment before you sent it off to the different four corners of the earth into different stocks and areas. And now you say it's not liquid. So again, this is what God wants. Don't forget your integrity when money comes. In essence, dance with the one that brung you, and the one that brung you was Jesus Christ. The one that brung you was the Word of God. The one that brung you was the Holy Spirit and your love for Him. Stay with the foundation. Turn with me to James chapter 4. I love this passage of Scripture because it deals so much, again, with business people in the congregation, which can make a tremendous difference. And listen, I know there's people I'm talking about here and warnings of that have gone and erred after business, but there's also many who have stayed true and faithful to the things of God and their business has been built up and they continue to be a giver today. I've put those types of people on my church board that through the years they've made a massive amounts of money, but always kept Jesus Christ first. Always look for a place to go give their testimony, how God brought them from nothing to something. Always looking back on the fact that they were nothing and God took them and made something out of them. And every bit of reputation they have, every great thing in their business that they have, all comes back to one thing. It's God that put me into this position. James chapter four, 
verses 13 through 17 says this, go, uh, go to now you that say tom- today or tomorrow, we will go into a certain city and continue there for a year and buy and sell and make profit. He's speaking here to businessmen. And what he says in verse 13 was, come on now, you business people that say today or tomorrow, we'll go into a certain city and continue there for a year and buy and sell and make profit. What they're saying is we're going to franchise our business or we're going to open up a second location and we're going to begin to expand our business. It's doing so well here, we're going to expand. And God has no problem with you expanding your business. He just has a bit problem with you expanding your business because you think it's good. The Wall Street Journal thinks it's good. The economy looks good. You have no idea what's going to happen to the economy a day from now, a month from now, or a year from now. You don't know, but guess who does? The Holy Spirit does. And all three members of the Godhead are omniscient. They know everything. And so when you're guided by them, you have a guide that's far better than Wall Street Journal. You have a guide that's far better than any uh, uh, business channel you can watch on television. It says here now in that, the end of that verse, and you say, let's continue there for a year and buy and sell and make profit. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It's even a vapor that appears for a short time and then vanishes away. For that you should say, if the Lord will, we will live and do this thing or that. But now you rejoice in your boasting. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore, to him that knows to do good and does it not to him, it is a sin. That verse that we often use here, if you did, to him that knows to do right and does it, it's a sin, was first of all directed to business people who used to know what was right when they first started their business. I mean, they might have actually mortgaged part of the the equity in their home. They got some money because they were so sold on the fact this business was going to do well. And they paid all the price. I mean, they, they, put, they bought their things. They paid their fees. They paid their taxes. They got all the proper uh, you know, zoning ordinances. All the different things are required for that building, all their permits. And despite all the opposition, they pressed through it. Now the business has started. And it started off slow, but it began to build up. And they came to the pastor every two or three weeks going, Pastor, I really need prayer. I know this was God, but man, it just doesn't look so good. And all of a sudden, things started to turn around. And what carried them through was their integrity. Now their business begins to prosper. And instead of coming to the pastor for more advice or going to the Word of God for more advice, they're looking to other business people. They're going to different seminars to find out what other people think and what other businesses think. And you drop the highest priority of all, which is God Himself, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow, to listen to people that are telling you what they think is going to happen tomorrow and are not sure what's going to happen tomorrow. And all they can build the future on is trends from the past. Listen, I know a God that's going to tell you exactly what's going to happen happen in the days to come. He will guide you and lead you into what to do in your business, whether to wait or whether to invest, whether to build, whether to uh, to expand, all these things. He simply says, this is what you should be saying. You should be asking and finding the Lord's will in this expansion. And you might be saying, but I don't know if it's God's will that I expand. Listen, if your business is expanding, God wants it to expand. He just wants it to expand correctly so that you won't end up later on losing everything. And so often this happens where people have expanded and they've gone to places because it looked good, the market looked good, all the testing looked good, all the different things they had, their marketing plans, plans, but yet it didn't work out. And so it's simply saying that here. Businessmen make up a great segment of the local church. Those gifted in making money can recognize the office of a giver. Romans chapter 12 and verse 8, he who gives, let him do it with simplicity or liberality. So don't make the money and then not give. He's simply saying, stay liberal, stay giving. What I mean by liberal there is liberal to give. Your liberality is known to all people, your desire to give. So uh, nations should not uh, should or part, nations should not punish the wealthy because they are wealthy, but neither should churches. And I've been around churches. They said, if you make a lot of money, that there's something wrong with you because God intended we all be poor. That is not the case. You're not, how, if you believe in poverty, then why are you going to rich people in your church and asking them to give into the church building? You know good and well that that's business people who make excessive amounts of money, huge amounts of money are wonderful. And we shouldn't be running them down because God has gifted them and they have this innate desire and this innate a push inside of them to constantly keep pushing to make money. They are driven inside. It's part of their nature that a driven person needs to understand the profits that I make should go to the kingdom of God. God loves driven people for his kingdom. So wealthy people have the capital to invest. They take the risk. They begin businesses. Wealthy people begin companies. Then they hire, provide jobs for others. Big 
business is not evil. It's just because simply it's big. And we look at that in our country. Now you hear so many people saying, well, big business this, and the moment it's a big business, that means there's something wrong with it. No, there's something right with it. Do you realize how many small businesses feed off of big businesses? In fact, most of the people in your congregation starting small business, they couldn't do that if there wasn't a big business out there to help supply for. If there wasn't an automaker out there, then who could open up a small shop on the corner to repair cars? Who could open up a brake shop and who could open up an air conditioning place for cars? All the different things that come because of big business. And because there are huge businesses, that then right down the street, you need to have restaurants and all the smaller businesses that are supports for the employees that work there. So small business has always fed off of big business. So that comes back again today that you are not omniscient. You don't know what's going to happen. What's going to be around tomorrow in the world? Circumstances and the economy are totally unpredictable. And about the time we think it happens, we figured it out, it drops. Even the experts get on TV and say, we don't know exactly. We, we couldn't quite see this coming, but we think it happened because of this or happened because of that. So unpredictable things because why? We live in a cursed world, but yet in the midst of a cursed world, God still promises you can make it and you can prosper even if it comes by the sweat of your brow. So he's simply telling them that returning to your roots of prayer and guidance by the word of God and Holy Spirit is the most important thing. What did he say? If the Lord wills, I will go and invest in more business. So I think it's time you make a fresh business commitment. You that are in business, if you're watching this program today, when's the last time you really prayed over that business? Woke up in the morning saying, Lord, direct me in my investments today. Direct me in my pursuits today. Direct me in what I should be giving to the kingdom of God. Lord, if there's any extra, I don't even need you to speak. I'll just purpose in my heart. I want to be a giver because Lord, when I die and I am gone, I want people to say one thing, this business helped to finance the kingdom of God. And when I meet the people in heaven, they will thank me with gratitude attitude for the eternal things I sowed into, into this earth from my business. God wants to bless business people. So understand again, your confession should simply be, Father, I commit myself and my business to you afresh today. And you've given me the power to get wealth so that your covenant may be established in the earth. Lord, I want to commit this business more and more to evangelism, more and more to missions work, more and more to help my local church. Lord, they're in a building program, and when they do, they're going to be able to get more people in. I love my pastor. I love the word he preaches. He's changed my life a lot. I want him to be even more blessed, so I'm going to give into the church, into the kingdom of God. You do that. And all I can say is, Katie, bar the door. God loves a cheerful giver and will send more and more blessings to you because why? He gives more seed to the sower. We'll see you tomorrow. It did not take long for the dark clouds of legalism to form over the church at Jerusalem. It would eventually end the church there in 70 AD, but by 50 AD had already hindered the ministries of Peter and Paul, who eventually left the Jerusalem church for James to oversee. As pastor of this troubled church, James recognized the argument of faith versus works as a major issue, along with the pride and evil speaking which were infiltrating and dividing his congregation. James was compelled to address these issues both with his congregation and the Jews who were scattered abroad. In a New Testament commentary on James, Bob Yandian uses his personal notes in a verse-by-verse -verse study of the best pastoral epistle ever written, showing the heart of a true pastor and how devastating legalism can be to the church. To order, go to bobyandian.com or call 918-250-2207. You can order resources, become a partner, or browse free articles and podcasts by visiting our website at bobyandian.com. You can also join our mailing list and receive weekly devotions and the latest ministry updates. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We'll see you next time on Student of the Word with Bob Yandian.